The second season of the Kalispell Warhawks dynasty is underway. We watched them take the field in week one, and although they lost to Idaho, they showed strong signs of improvement on offense. We also saw the recruiting efforts already pay off, with true freshman Donnie Castillo having a nice first game of his career. Kalispell's offense is hopefully headed in the right direction. We are focused on recruiting and developing a winning program at Kalispell, which means we can't just worry about the present, we have to always be looking ahead and focused on how we can make this team better. And with that, we take our first look at recruiting this year with the Kalispell Warhawks. We had the 101st ranked recruiting class last year and acquired some very good football players. This year we are ramping up our recruiting efforts and we'll hopefully get some big commits to bring some excitement to this program. I've had some help in finding the players to target throughout our region so that we can take both our offense and defense to the next level. Our area scout, Blackjack, sent me a tape when we were setting up a recruiting plan for this year and he found a group of players that will make a great foundation for our recruiting efforts in Season 2. I want you to take a look. Thanks, Kane. I've gone ahead and I've scoured and scouted all over the Mountain West and the Northwest to go ahead and find some new life and talent that we can bring into this Warhawk program, as well as start to vitalize and energize the high schools here in Montana and see what talent we can pull from our own home state as well. We're actually going to start out in North Dakota with the talent that I think you should be able to pull without a problem. Sean Gallagher, he is a 6'3", 305-pound tackle from Fargo, really focusing on playing time, staying close to home, and conference prestige. I think that checks all his boxes when you're talking about Kalispell. He should be able to start almost immediately the second he gets there. Now, that's your call whether or not he will do that once he gets there. But he's got great size, a very good pass blocker uh, from what I've seen from him in tape. And with that size, I think he will be a great addition to the Warhawks team and puts on the pounds that I think the offensive line has desperately been needing coming back home to montana and talking about kalispell high there's been a phenomenon going around the high school that is the jean charles family seven siblings all together one of them currently playing at gonzaga after having a monster year as a high school basketball player and one of the highly touted prospects at 6'8", 230 as a forward. He's got some brothers there that are currently playing football. Sidney Jean Charles, the current quarterback there, a sophomore at 6'4", 190 pounds, could be interesting to look at in two years. Hayden Jean Charles, who is a 6'3", 204 tight end, currently only a freshman. And then Kelly Jean Charles, who plays free safety, a senior, a guy that we can get this year, and I think would be interested in playing in the Mountain West Conference. 6'2, 205, currently one of the top safeties in America. I was a little shocked to see that, maybe riding off the coattails of his brother's name, but still interesting if we can pull in a guy like that and people see, oh wow, we got one of the top safeties in the nation. Now, where we could see a bit of a downfall here is that Kelly is looking for pro potential. And seeing his brother go to Gonzaga, I can see why he may not be interested in looking at a place like Kalispell, but I think that if we pitch to him hard enough, we can get him in here. They've also got a teammate there, Hunter Clayton, an outside linebacker at 6'3", 215. So these guys have great size. And Hunter Clayton is a very good outside linebacker. It's an decent speed but what where he really excels is his hit power and tackling ability and his ability to play zone coverage a uh, guy who wants to stay right home and what better place to stay home than right in your hometown now the footage that you're seeing here is Kalispell High's first high school game this year up against Billings they went out to Billings to play this game and Billings High has a interesting prospect there that's going to have me keep an eye on that program for the upcoming years and see what prospects they're bringing out because this one's a good one. Brock Oxendine, defensive tackle, 6'5", 330 pounds. You get a guy like that in your interior line, that can be a huge game changer for your defense. The guy draws doubles. The guy absolutely moves linemen out of the way and can create space for other blitzers to come through. If this guy is in the center right there in your defensive line, that can be a complete game changer for you in the Mountain West. And I think that can make your defense uh, create some more opportunities to at least get blitzers in and make it a lot easier on coverage as well. Now, Brock is going to be a bit of a reach. 
He does want to stay close to home. The problem is, is that he's very interested in going to championship contenders and is very huge in the program tradition. Those are things that Kalispell does not have, which is why he's drawing attention from schools like Ohio State. It's not a good sign if Ohio State is already on his radar and looking to pitch to him. So if we want to get him, we need to be aggressive and go very, very hard after him and make sure that we pitch to him as much as we can and try to, try to draw him away. If we get someone like Brock in, this could be the start of a huge revolution in your defense. Now that we talked about game-breaking ability on defense, let's talk about some offensive players who can do the same thing for you. Now, these guys are going to be some reaches, but they're two guys that I think we should put on the board and try to go heavily at. And there's one that I actually think you have a great shot at. First guy we're going to talk about here is from Boulder, Colorado. I was able to get some film of him. His name is Roscoe Sheridan. He's one of the top running backs in the nation. He could be a guy that gets underlooked a little bit because he doesn't have breakaway speed. But my, this guy does not go down when the ball is in his hands. Uh, looking at some tape here of him right now. Just looking here, just running through a tackle before he's finally brought down by a safety who came in afterwards. And then another one here, well, it's just shaking off a tackle, shaking off another one. A little stiff arm here before he goes down. He carries it to the outside between the tackles. He goes through the tackle, gets into the end zone. Watch him as he follows his blocks and everything. You can see, there it is. He gets in the open field, and the breakaway speed isn't necessarily there. But because he's very patient as a runner and knows that he can take contact, like right here, bam, just goes right through his man as he gets into the end zone and does not leave his feet the entire time. Same play here. Just look at that. Just does not go out of bounds. He rides that defender and just keeps going, stays on his feet. Same thing here. Gets to the outside, juking, breaks one tackle, breaks a second, breaks a third. And even though he gets shoved out of bounds, he's still on his feet. And again here, a little back step there. Has some deceptive moves to him as well. So don't think it's just all power with Sheridan. I think he's going to make an interesting guy if he can make it here to Kalispell. Now, here's what you're going to have to pitch to him, however. Playing time. This is a guy that you're going to want us to have to start playing immediately. So if you can go heavy on him with that... Maybe we can try to sneak up there and get on the top of his board. The problem is, is that the Pac-12 and the Big 12 are going to be all over him, and we don't necessarily have the resources available to try to outbid teams like that. But I think that if we go as heavy as we possibly can and get our presence out there, it could make dividends for us in the future when we try to go after guys like Sheridan or if we even get him now, can show the legitimacy of our program and we can start to kind of get an uptick, something like a Boise State has done in previous years, like back in 2006. But if I had to say there was one position that you absolutely need on this Kalispell team and one guy I would absolutely go all in on in recruiting this year, it's the wide receiver position and it's this kid from Washington, Ja'Cory Day, 5'9", 180 pounds there's this play that I constantly see all the time of him and I think 5'9 is being generous the kit looks 5'8 he's going up against this corner who is 6'2 6'3 easily giving up six inches to this guy and he just jumps right in front of him snatches the ball from him from the air I can't say enough of him I'm going to show you the highlight film that got him really popular on YouTube have you ever felt are you listening
And just think, those were Ja'Cory Day's junior highlights. I can't wait to see what he can do in his senior season. But these players were excellent finds by Blackjack, and they are all players that can help us out at various areas of need. So let's take a look now at the board. Ja'Cory Day is currently our number two prospect, and he's leaning towards Washington right now and has the interest of Washington State and Oregon. Now he's only the 124th ranked receiver, but he is exactly what this offense needs. We have plenty receivers with his physical makeup on this team, but none of them have the explosiveness that Day can bring to the offense. A player of his caliber would take over a role similar to Troy Evans and absolutely thrive. I really like that defensive tackle from Billings, Brock Oxendine. He's also favoring Washington. We're talking about a guy that's 6'5", 330, and we saw how powerful he looked on tape. He's got the size and the strength, we just have to refine his football skills, and you could have a very dangerous nose tackle. Now when we talk about pipeline states, I definitely want to turn Montana into a pipeline, and players like Hunter Clayton could make that possible. He's from right here in Kalispell, he has to know what's going on with this program. He may be favoring Hawaii right now, but hopefully he will stay close to home. He seems very versatile, and I think that he'd be a great addition to our run defense. If I had to compare him to another player, I'd say Chad Greenway in his prime years with the Vikings. I also have to agree with Blackjack when it comes to Kelly John Charles. I don't see the second best safety in the nation. I see a good football player who's maybe a better athlete than football player right now. But he's from Kalispell, and we're always going to recruit the players close to home. The family dynamic there with all the athletes that have come from that family may have elevated his stock, but I still see a player worth targeting for us. He's a four-star prospect. Also a four-star prospect is Roscoe Sheridan. And when I think about the future of this offense and what I want, in my mind I picture something like the Seattle Seahawks offense when they had Marshawn Lynch. I would love a thumper between the tackles. Now I think Sheridan is a good back. I'm not sure he has the same power you'd get from a player like Marshawn Lynch. But I think he's actually a really good athlete, and I would compare him more to a Jonathan Stewart type of back, which would be still a good fit for what I want moving forward. Now, early in the recruiting process, we did target Sean Gallagher, and he seems to be very interested in Kalispell. He'd love to stay close to Fargo. This is about as close as you can really get. He wants to play early, and we have a definite need for a pass-blocking tackle. From the six prospects Blackjack introduced to us, Gallagher seems to be the one most likely to commit. Those are some excellent players who would all boost our program, but they aren't the only players on my board. I think that free safety Shannon Evans from Orchard Homes, Montana is a better football player than Kelly John Charles. He is a three-star prospect, the number 13 ranked free safety. I'm not sure we're a tremendous fit for his needs. But I see a player who's a refined tackler, he can hit, I think that his coverage is good but could still improve. His press coverage is also not bad, so maybe he could even play cornerback. We see a lot of 6'3 guys trying to play corner nowadays. I would love to get some speed on this team for sure, and John Blankenship from across the country in New Jersey could provide that should he want to travel out west. He's a burner, maybe not as fast as Ja'Cory Day, but a little bit more refined, I believe, as a receiver. And he has a little bit more size as well. The 10th player on the board here is Malcolm Tyson from California, currently favoring USC. Good size, 6'189". I'm not sure he can keep up with the fastest receivers in the nation, but he's very skilled in coverage, and I think that he'd be a great fit for our defense. Now we saved the first player for last, and that's mainly because he's really starting to favor Rice. It's also kind of an example for us to follow. We see how aggressive Rice is, and they can grab the interest of players like Anthony Gibbons, who's a phenomenal athlete. I think he's a defensive back. He could be probably a very good safety, or maybe a step down at cornerback due to his lack of deep speed. But he's a very skilled cover man. And I'm not sure that we're going to have a great chance to go after him. The whole state of Texas loves him, but we're also throwing our hat in the ring. Those are the top 10 recruits we are currently looking at, and throughout the season now moving forward, I will continue to update you all on the progress of each recruiting battle and what each player is looking to do with their college football decision. 
Each of these players represents a great chance for us to build our program, and we'll see who wants to come to Kalispell and be a part of it. Thank you all for watching. Up next, Kalispell travels to Oregon State for the second game of the season. Should be a good one, and hopefully the offense continues to show their signs of improvement. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. Also, leave your feedback down below. Who are your favorite prospects on display in this video? Subscribe to my channel for more Kalispell Dynasty to come, and also subscribe to Blackjack's channel and follow what he's working on. Thank you all again, and have a great day. I'll see you next time.